Again, welcome to Movie Clips. Today, I'll show you a movie from 2016 called Beginning. It's an action, drama, and horror movie. Ahead are spoilers. Be careful and watch out. In the near future, the UN will make it a rule that every country must cut its population by 5% every year to stop overpopulation. Every year, America gives all of its students the same test, and the students with the lowest scores are put to death. The 10 to 241 or the thinning is the name of the test. Students in Austin, Texas, are getting ready for the thinning, which will happen in 18 hours. Simon and Lena, his older sister, sit at a desk in his room while Lena tries to teach Simon how to be a good person. Corinne and Joey, who are younger than them, sit on the bed and play games. Simon gets upset and says he can't learn enough before the test, even with Lena's help. He asks Lena for something, and she gives him money in exchange for a cheating contact lens. When he puts it on, the answers to the math problems in his notebook come up on the screen. She tells him that after the test, he has to throw it away. Then, Lena gets a call from Dr. Perkash, who tells her that her mom tried to leave the hospital against doctor's orders. She asks the doctor to keep her mother from going to the hospital and tells her siblings they have to leave. Lena sees her mom sign herself out of the hospital before she leaves. The doctor takes Lena aside and tells her that her mother's condition is getting worse. He tells her that even though they can't treat her if she goes home, they might be able to help her the most by making her feel better. Blake walks through the hallways of the governor's mansion 12 hours before the thinning. He sees a few bodyguards. He offers to get something from the kitchen for them, but they turn him down. Blake instead sneaks out of the house and goes to his car, where he finds Ellie, his girlfriend. She scares him, and then she makes a joke about how the same trick always scares him. He takes him to the Bilski's house, where they take off all their clothes and swim in the pool. Then, in the car, they kiss until Ellie says she's nervous about the test. Then, one of the bodyguards, Vince, finds them and takes Blake back to his father. Blake's dad, Governor Redding, gives him a lecture and tells him that he can have fun, but he needs to choose better times. He says that Ellie is a distraction that Blake can't have until he finishes his test tomorrow and his last test next year. Blake won't have to worry about anything else for the rest of his life. Before the governor leaves the room, he gives Blake a big hug. Three hours before the thinning, guards walk around a military school that has cameras, barbed wire, and chain link fences all around it. Guards in black masks watch as students walk up to the building. Simon runs into another student and drops his contact lens, which he can't find. He is told to keep going by the guard. Blake walks up to Lena as she watches students say goodbye to their parents. He asks for a study guide, but she says she gave the last one to someone else. Kellen, a friend of hers, asks about Blake, but she says she doesn't know much about him. The guards check the students for devices that could be used to cheat, and if they find one, they chase him down and catch him in a net. Kellen uses his dad's security access to watch the security footage, which he then sends to a reporter named Wendy Banks, whom he says he knows. He tells her that he has her email, but she doesn't seem to be interested in his advice. Blake tries to make Ellie feel better inside the school. The guards lock the school doors 15 minutes before the test starts. The students get together in their classrooms, and the teachers go over the rules with them. Miss Birch tells her students that she's proud of them and that the questions are hard but not meant to trick them. She also says that chances are always there. Mr. Glass, a second teacher, also goes over the rules and reminds the students that the test is a good way to measure their abilities. Then he tells them to start, and the lights in the room go out. Each student picks up a tablet and starts taking the test while their faces are lit up by the tablets. When there is one minute left, the teachers tell the students, and then they say that the test is over. Some of the students show signs of stress as they wait for their grades. They shift in their seats, cry, or look like they don't feel good. Kellen is one of the group. At some point, the names of the students who did not pass are called out. Each time a name is called, one student is taken out. Some help, some beg, and others need to be forced. Kellen is happy that he did well, but Ellie does not, and Blake calls his dad to beg him to do something to save Ellie. But his dad tells him he has to follow the rules. Blake is upset, so he slams the locker. He runs after them and uses a fire extinguisher to attack a guard. He tells Ellie to run because the guards are busy with something else, but the crowd stops her and she is caught. After one year, the next test is in 24 hours. Lena is sitting at a table with her two younger siblings. There are boxes all around them, and one of her siblings is holding a pamphlet that says her mother has died. Miss Birch stops by to bring the family more casserole and to try to make Lena feel better about Corinne's first test. Blake, on the other hand, works out in his room. A picture of Ellie is still stuck to his wall. He starts to record a video on a tablet and says that if anyone was watching it, he would already be dead. Three hours before the test, Lena quizzes Corinne as they walk towards school, 
then gives her a hug and sends her in. Governor Redding talks with Vince about plans for an announcement and makes sure everything is ready. Then he asks Blake how things are going. He tries to tell Blake that there's nothing he can do about Ellie, but Blake doesn't listen. Blake goes to school, and on the way, Vince sees him put a package in a mailbox. Lena and Kellen talk about how this is their last test when they see each other at school. Kellen says he's scared, but he knows that Lena probably isn't because she's so smart. Kellen runs into Wade, the quarterback, on the way inside. Wade then picks on another kid. People aren't sure if he's smart enough to have stayed alive this long. The school is locked down again 15 minutes before the test. Vince talks to Governor Redding about his son at the mansion and shows him the package that Blake tried to deliver. Inside is Blake's tablet, where he made a video to explain how he was going to fail the test on purpose. In the video, he tells his dad that if he wants to support the system, he has to support the system that killed his son. The governor tells the school to bring his son home, but the school is locked, so he throws a chair in anger. Back at the facility, Blake waits to take his test, and a girl with dark hair named Sarah looks at Mr. Glass. She had slept with him in order to get a good grade. He doesn't meet her gaze. Before the first test, Miss Cole shows the younger kids in her class a video. The video was made by a company called Asura Global. It shows a cartoon Earth explaining why the test was done, which was to deal with the fact that there were too many people. It says that some countries kill their old people or limit how many kids a couple can have, but America only lets smart kids live there, which will help it become the best country again. The video makes it look like the kids who fail the test are just making the world feel better. Miss Cole goes outside to take a break. The guard tells her that someone else can give the test if she doesn't feel up to it, but she says no. As the kids finish the video and clap, she goes back to the classroom. She tells them to take the fun test they have been studying for. The test is also given first to the older students. Mason King watches over them from the control room. He gets a call, which he takes. Mr. Glass notices that Blake finishes his test early in the classroom. Nathan, one of the younger kids, raises his hand to ask Miss Cole for help on a question. She can't help him, so she tells him to do his best. Miss Cole tells the students to stand up and follow the leader if their name is called when the test is over. The teachers said the names of the kids who had failed. Nathan, Sarah, and Lena are among them, but Blake is not. Mason calls the mayor to make sure that Blake was moved successfully and is safe. The mayor then gives the go-ahead for the thinning to start. Blake looks on as the kids who didn't do well are sent down the hall. Miss Birch runs after a guard and insists that Lena is the best student she's ever had and that she can't believe Lena could have failed. The guard checks with his bosses, but they say there's nothing wrong and tell him to send Lena away. The teacher holds on to Lena for a moment, then gives her a keycard and tells her there's always a chance and to run away. In the rec room, students are praised for getting through the day. They dance to music while they eat. Miss Birch sees Mr. Glass making out with another student with dark hair. Governor Redding steps onto the stage to make a big announcement somewhere else. He starts by talking about how he has made things better since becoming governor. He talks about the hard decisions that had to be made, but that had to be done. At the party at the school, a TV plays his speech. Blake notices it and walks away. As the governor keeps talking about how the thinning is not cruel, but instead a way to improve the population and make it the best it can be, the failed children are being let down the hallway. They are told to take their clothes off and get ready to be cleaned up. Lena hides the keycard by putting it in her mouth. As Blake walks through the school, his dad makes an announcement that he wants to run for president. The kids who failed get new clothes and are taken to a room with a few rows of chairs. They are all handcuffed to chairs, and the guards around them pull out syringes. Some of the children start to feel scared. Blake acts like he's hurt in the hallway to get a guard's attention, then knocks the guard out. Then, he goes to the control room and sneaks in after Mason leaves. He tries to use the computer, but it needs a password, so he turns off the power to the school just as Mason finds the guard lying on the floor. Some of the kids who failed are let out of their chains, and the guards try to get back in charge. During the chaos, Lena gets away by using Miss Birch's keycard to open the door. Mason sends Kellen's dad, Victor Wood, to the control room to fix the system that has gone down. The guards take him away from the party, telling the other guests that there was just a small power cut. Mason then checks on the kids who failed. They are now back in the care of the guards. He asks if they've counted the people and finds out that they haven't. They find out that Lena isn't there. Lena is trying to get out of a door when a guard sees her. She tells the guard that she is Miss Birch and that she called him when she saw a student run down the stairwell. When he turns away from her, she attacks him. When Blake shows up, the two of them let down their guard. Lena and Blake talk, and Lena says she couldn't have failed the test. Blake said that he tried to fail on purpose, but his dad helped him out. Lena notices that something is wrong, and when Blake sets off an alarm, she and Blake climb through a vent to get away. 
Mason decides that the school will stay on lockdown until the problem is fixed, even though the time when parents were supposed to pick up their kids has passed. He hears that someone who said they were a teacher attacked another guard, so he tells all the teachers to go to a holding room. Lena and Blake talk about how Lena sells cheats to kids who want to pass the test but don't know how. Blake thinks she's taking advantage of them until she says it was a last-ditch effort to pay for her mother's treatments, which she still couldn't afford. Blake apologizes for judging her. They start going through the vents to get to the server room. During Governor Redding's interview, the news anchor tells him that the school has been closed for a long time and asks him about it. The governor stumbles because he doesn't know what's going on, but he insists that everything will be fine soon. Mason says to the teachers that they need to show their IDs and key cards. The governor calls him to find out what's going on and yells at them to figure out what's going on quickly. Blake and Lena keep going through the vents until Blake falls through one and into a pool below. Lena jumps in after him to save him. She pulls him out of the water and gives him CPR at the edge of the pool. They get dry clothes from the lockers and change without looking at each other. Lena finds another hole in the wall, and they go back inside. The students who pass start to get angry with the guards in the recreation room, and one of the guards beats up a student. Kellen puts it on his phone and sends it to Wendy. When Lena and Blake get to the server room's door, Lena's keycard falls out of her pocket. With the keycard on the ground below the vent, they go to a science classroom where Lena gets a magnet to fish for the key. They make too much noise, and as a guard comes closer, Lena is able to get back into the vent, while Blake stays in the room. He tries to stay out of sight, but the guard finds him. When Lena tries to catch the key by fishing, the guard sees and takes it. But Blake is actually wearing a guard's uniform. He tells her he is going to the thinning. Miss Birch tells Mr. Glass that they should get a drink together in the holding room. As they flirt, she takes his keycard. Miss Birch then shows Mason her ID and Mr. Glass's keycard to get people to stop thinking she is a bad guy. Mason thinks Mr. Glass is the traitor when he doesn't have his. When Lena gets to the server room, she sees a computer there. She tries to use her keycard, but it needs Mason's password. She sends Kellen a message to ask for his help, but he's not there. Kellen gets the message from Lena just as his dad turns the power back on. He sends her a video of Mason typing in his password, so she can get in by copying it. She first looks at Corinne's score and is happy to see that she passed with an 86%. Next, she looks at hers. She got a 98%, but she still failed. Wade passed with a score of 42%, and Blake passed with a score of 15%. She also looks at Ellie's score and sees that she failed with an 88%. She hears on the news that Governor Redding said that Lena attacked and killed two guards after failing her test and then ran away. He says that she is to blame for the shutdown. In the meantime, Wendy watches the video Kellen sent of the guard beating up a passing student, and she realizes that the official story doesn't match up with what's really going on. She talks back to Kellen and shows the video. When Lena finds out that Kellen sent out footage from inside the school, she sends him pictures of the score. Mason and Victor then see her on the cameras, and she runs away. Blake finds the thinning and tries to trick the guards into bringing the failed students to the recreation hall. The guards won't take orders from anyone but Mason, so Blake tries to fight the guards. Mason catches Lena. She says she has proved that she passed, but he sends her to the thinning, where she finds that Blake has been put down. Kellen gets Lena's and Ellie's proof of test scores, so he sends the pictures to Wendy. Wendy talks about the fake test scores and the paperwork she got about them. She says that Lena failed even though she got the best grade in the school, while Blake, the son of the governor, passed even though he got the worst grade. Vince tells Governor Redding at the mansion that he needs to stop this and let Lena go, but Redding says there's one more move. Mason calls him to ask for permission to start the thinning, but he says no because the list needs to be changed. Once the changes are made, Lena is freed and told that she passed. She then goes to Blake and kisses him. She is then taken out of the room, and Blake is made to sit in her chair. Wade goes to the thinning, too. The guards walk up to the kids, who are scared in different ways, and give them injections. Blake loses consciousness, and the school's lockdown is lifted. When Lena sees her little sister again, she hugs her outside with tears in her eyes. Miss Birch is with her, too. Kellen gives his dad a big hug. They are both smiling and happy. Wendy tells the parents whose kids don't come back that Mason King has been taken in for questioning about his role in changing test scores. This makes the parents who lost their kids start to cry. Wendy's report says that people stopped thinking that Redding was involved when they found out that his son was one of the failed students. Redding says that he will help look into what happened and then uses Blake's failure to show voters that he is just like them. A big truck drives up to a new building. Blake and the other failed students are brought into the building by elevator. They find a factory that makes the tablets that the tests are given on, and they put students who have failed the tests to work there, 